coming. I'm not part of Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, but uh, my name is Allegra Frank. I'm an editor from The Daily Beast. Thanks for joining us. That teaser you just saw was for an upcoming Disney Channel show called Kiff. But we are here to talk about a different upcoming Disney Channel show, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Yeah. Really excited for this one. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is a series based on a hit Marvel comic book. And it is about a 13-year-old super genius girl named Lunella and her 10-ton T-Rex, Devil Dinosaur, classic combo, who protects uh, the Lower East Side from danger. So shout out to New York City, baby. Yes. And the show premieres February 10th on Disney Channel. And we are so lucky to have some of the cast and crew with us today to talk a little bit about the show and get us excited for what we're going to see. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce some of the panelists here with us today. First, we have the voice of Lunella, a.k.a. Moon Girl herself, Diamond White. Hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> Hi. They're truly making us runway walk, basically, <laughs> from all the way, seven feet away. Um, then we have the voice of Devil Dinosaur, Fred Tadashore. <laughs> Woo! Hello. <laughs> Very nice. And then we have the voice of Lunella's grandfather, Pops, Gary Anthony Williams. <laughs> Hello. Running is efficient. And then executive producer Steve Loader is here. Hi, Steve. Supervising producer, Rodney Cloudin. Just noticed the Marvel sweatshirt you got. Disney headquarters, very cool. Um, and finally, we have Pilar Flynn, producer. bit of a sprint up to the uh, <laughs> no need everyone take your sweet time thank you so much for being here guys thank you um, and in addition to steve ex uh, marvel's moon girl and devil dinosaur is executive produced by helen shuglin who could not be with us today and lawrence fishburn um and lawrence fishburn actually has a recurring voice role on the show as well he is the beyonder so, ooh, yeah, oh, that'll right, be exciting right, to right. see and hear. So welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, so first thing is for Steve. Tell us a little bit about how the show came to be. Sure. Well, it starts with Lawrence Fishburne in a comic book store. Um, he did his, you know, weekly run to pick up new comics every Wednesday um, and was drawn to Brandon Montclair and Amy Weiner. Rainy Weeder's run of Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. He was drawn to it, picked it up, fell in love with the comic. Called his producing partner, Helen Sugland, uh, at Cinema Gypsy. They made blackish, grownish, mixedish, and said, We, we got to make a show out of this. So called. But without the name Ish on it. Without the name Ish. <laughs> that is true. First one. Uh, called Marvel, called Disney, and when you get a call from Cinema Gypsy, you, you take that call. Uh, and deals were made, and here we are. They, uh, they gave me a call because I have, uh, in my career, I've done a lot of strong female protagonists. I was a producer director on a show called Kim Possible. <laughs> and instantly, Lawrence and I, we kind of, we got the vision for the show, and we said, this is it, let's, let's make this thing. And so here's the thing, so, so that's the history of the show, but today, we have something really special to share for the very first time. Um, we have the main title 
of Marvel's Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur that we're going to watch right now. Oh. Hey. So obviously from what we see um, in that teaser, we're going to talk about the characters and the music, obviously, because those are very defining parts of the show and that intro. But the artistic style, the actual, the animation style, I think is really immediately striking. Um, so for both Steve and Rodney, can you talk a little bit about how you guys came to land on this very graphic, colorful, vibrant style for the show? Yeah, well, uh, first, you know, we start th thinking about what New York is. You know, New York in a lot of animated shows has been misrepresented. You know, it, and, and New York is not slick. It's not shiny. It's grit. It's got edge. It's got history and architecture and everything. So we thought about what would be the best way to represent New York, and we thought about, thought about the graphic style. We thought about graffiti. We talk, talked about all street art and idea of Basquiat, Andy Warhol. So you see there's just a little bit of like the offset kind of screen printing things that's going on with, the, uh, with all the color design and everything. So we also wanted it to be a character, but we didn't also didn't want to distract from the actual characters that are animated in front of the screen, but being just as fly. And the characters themselves are done in a very, you know, pen and ink, hand-drawn style, because um, we wanted it to feel like an illustrated, moving comic book. Yeah, it definitely gives that um, vibe. And I really appreciate you mentioning the New York inspiration there with the graffiti. I, I noticed that really comes up a lot in the show itself. Yeah, we use actual graffiti artists to actually do the graffiti, so that's why I think it looks head over heels better than a lot of shows that do graffiti. And you know Did you guys tried to chase them away as they were doing the graffiti? <laughs> like in real life? Yeah, it was complicated. So Steve obviously mentioned the characters, so we should get into that. Um, for the cast, starting with Diamond right here, our moon girl, tell us a little bit. Yeah. Who, well, and I think you sing the theme song I too, do. right? I Multi -talent. do. Multi-talent. Yeah. yeah, I sing the theme song. Ah. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about Moon Girl. Well, Moon Girl is one of the smartest uh, girls in the Marvel Universe. She is the first teenage girl black superhero in the Marvel and Disney uh, collaboration world. So that's pretty cool. We made history with this, and I'm so honored to be a part of it. Lunella is obsessed with all things science, quantum physics. She loves music. And she loves her beloved dinosaur that she brought out of a portal. <laughs> they have such a unique bond. And she takes the time to actually learn your language. So I understand you completely. <laughs> and I do. What about those hot dogs? Those hot dogs are <laughs> He's saying he loved the hot dogs. <laughs> And um, Libe isn't here, but she plays my best friend, Casey. Casey is this superstar of social media. She, she tells Lunella when to like post. She actually helps her become the superhero that she is. And technically, um, Lunella doesn't have any superpowers, but her brain is her superpower. And she is uh, the girl to say that one girl can make a difference. And it's OK to be into quantum physics and science and to be a little weirdo, because I relate to that as well. That's why I love this character so much. I relate to her being the one weird kid with her head in her own world of like science and things like that. So that's Lunella. <laughs> yeah, Definitely, I think a lot of people will relate to being those little weirdo science nerd it's girls. It's okay to be weird. <laughs> it's better to be weird. Yes. Okay, we heard a little bit from Devil Dinosaur, but I'd like to hear from Fred also. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Let's, let's, let's translate for that. Um, yes, uh, well, wow, what an honor to be part of this in any way. Uh, Devil Dinosaur uh, is, I, I've been familiar with them before in the Marvel comics. I did not know Lunella, but I knew about him by being playing Hulk and him have a past. And um, uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting part to play. First of all, he's, he has a T-Rex um, or a very large animal who 
loves Lunella. Um, he will do anything for her. He is a 10-ton dog, basically. Um, and he's, while he's a force of nature and he's powerful, his heart is even bigger, and he loves um, painting and music and watching movies and cuddling. He's a really, he's got a good heart. Sounds like I'm listening to your dating app. I right know. Now. He's a Pisces. <laughs> on, in his realm, on another dimension, it's a different sign. It's, <laughs> and, um, and we, and we uh, long walks on the beach. And no, and he's just, he's, but, but uh, and they are a team together because he trusts her implicitly because she took him on. And even coming in from another dimension, he didn't want to go back there. He wanted to stay here with her and be at home with her. And that's, that's, that's the approach with him. <laughs> very sweet I always love the like girl and her dog kind of mm -hmm. no but uh, we're yeah. we are more than girl and dog <laughs> we are partners we are partners in oh, crime yeah, partners. Partners. yeah. it's a family yeah, yeah. yeah. And we can't forget about pops my granddad oh, what, what a se first of all great segue ah, yeah. uh, segue <laughs> queen smartest girl in the Marvel Universe also queen of segues <laughs> Uh, yeah, hey, I'm Gary Anthony Williams. Yeah, I play, uh, yeah. Thank you for clapping for all of my names. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I play Pops, which is uh, Lunella's granddad. Um, and the thing about him, like this whole uh, Lower East Side situation, years ago, Pops had opened up a roller skating rink on the Lower East Side because, and this is taken from truth, they would have roller skating rinks, but they were mostly white, but the black people could come on like soul nights or nights like that, so it was very segregated. So he decided for the community to start a roller skating rink where everyone was invited. And they started this back in the 70s, and he's still running it to this day. He could sell it off, of course, and make millions of dollars. It's real estate on the Lower East Side, but he keeps it going for the community, for his family, for the family that is the community and the community that is the family, uh, a super loving dude, and I, ba I basically mirror his his hey, voice character after my. I'm pr I'm him. No, I'm a very loving guy. Uh, I don't take long walks on the beach, though. I refuse to walk. I need to be carried everywhere. He roller skates. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he was a roller skate king back in his day, and just like him, his daughter, his uh, daughter, his granddaughter, uh, Lunella is fascinating and amazing on roller skates as well. So that's pretty much pop in a nutshell. Very loving, very family, very community-based kind of fellow. Cool backstory, yeah. I feel like this is the perfect show to be kind of introducing at New York Comic Con with so much of your character stories are ingrained in New York. And Rodney, I know that you were a yes. big, <laughs> a big hand in casting the characters. So I don't know if I was a big hand <laughs> <laughs> uh, for casting these particular actors in their in their roles. What drew you to them? Um, I'm especially curious about Diamond, knowing that she is this multi talent, well, um, being yeah, both Rodney. Moon Girl and then also singing. This is a character who, who is just as much about her signs as she is about music. So what drew I mean, you to these actors? You pretty much said it. She's a multi-hyphenate. <laughs> you know, when, we, when Diamond auditioned, it was, that was it. It was pretty much, she in the encapsulated Moon Girl, she encapsulated Lunella, particularly. You know, there's a heart and warmth and genuineness and a little sass attitude that yeah. that's needed, <laughs> you know. But she, you know, very talented and just, when we're in the record, she delivers, and it's just always fantastic. And Fred, you know, you can't have an animated show without Fred Tattashore in it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you mean legally you can't. Fred no, will sue really. you. It's, he will sue you if you don't hire him. Yeah, we have. I have I've got people. It's yeah. okay. <laughs> but, you know, Fred is just magnificent. He's got, like, I don't know, four different throats in his going on there, so he can make all these noises, but... What's great about Fred is that he takes this role seriously to the point where in the scripts he asks specific for the, for the lines, the actual dialogue for him. So he's not like reading devil grunts, rah, rah, but he's like devil grunting. I'm not sure about this, Lunella. And then he gives that. <coughs> <form>. <coughs> yeah. yeah, just like that. And then we ask him, can we do a little bit, a little more softer? <laughs> 
Don't worry, yeah. devil. <laughs> Yeah, and Gary, Gary's, Gary came in as a hero because uh, we had a pops and some, I don't know, I don't even want to talk about what happened, but Gary I came in. I want to know everything. And took, <laughs> Gary came in and just took the part and just, just ran with it, you know, and he is as smooth as his, his head is shiny. <laughs> <laughs> Literally never been described as I'm as smooth <laughs> as my head. <laughs> Y'all see so, Gary, yeah, he's smooth as his head, man. But you can't, you can't deny that voice. That it, voice is silky, man. Thanks, man. And it has been a 100%. I got to tell you, like, there's nothing like the comfort of being in a booth when these people are in charge and just letting you relax truly. and have a good time. Like, so kudos to you guys. Yeah, truly. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You guys are the best. I can tell you guys really do care about these characters so much already, which is really cool to see. Um, and I want to throw to Pilar. So I w I'm curious to you, there's obviously diversity, community, as Gary said, the cultural aspects of the setting are so core to the show. And I'm curious to you, can you talk, can, I'm curious if you can talk more about the importance of reflecting the real world and the diversity within it inside of the show as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was so important to all of us in leadership because we knew this was going to be a really important and special show. And we not only wanted to tell the story of this little black girl as a superhero in a beautiful and high quality way, but we also wanted to tell it authentically and as inclusively as possible. And um, because so much of us in leadership are diverse ourselves, uh, I myself am a Latina, it was our mission, like from the beginning, that we were going to cast authentically both on screen as well as behind the scenes. So um, I'm so proud to be able to say that uh, most of our crew is actually made up of women, people of color, members of the LGBTQ plus community. And we also did something really different on this show, which was we made it really collaborative and we invited our entire crew to speak up, to weigh in, to give us ideas, to tell us if something didn't feel right. And I think you can really, really feel that in the fabric of the show. And actually something else that was very exciting to me that's different is that um, the majority of our writer's room and actually our current writer's room is 100% female. Actually, our Amazing story editor, co-producer, Kate Kandel, hi, Kate. is here with us. <laughs> and she leads an incredible team of women who just bring their authentic selves and just talking in the story room about, you know, what, what it was like when we were 13 or what we wish we'd seen on screen um, has been so refreshing and so different. And like I say, I think you can really feel that passion and excitement on screen uh, with the characters and in the stories they tell. And the directors. Oh yeah, and our directors, our, our directors are all currently female directors as well. Um, our supervising director is Ben Juano, and he was also responsible for bringing them on, training them up. So I'm so, so proud of our team. And uh, yeah, we did not take no for an answer when they said there, there were not enough diverse people out there that could do this show. We were like, we will find them, yeah, and we, we did. We've done a, uh, there was our Alan, he, he did a yeah, lot Alan of March. research to, in terms of a uh, tracker, just tracking percentages in terms of how much of a certain group is represented in, in the episodes or in yeah. the show. So it was like really scientific. Yeah, because we wanted to do it right. We realized yeah. even though we were a majority diverse crew, we even have so much subconscious bias ourselves. So we took you know a page from Gina Davis and we were like, all right, we're gonna put it in black and white. And it was amazing when we uh, laid out the data, like what was missing. So anything that was missing, we try to fill um, as much as possible. So and just, and yeah, and also in the terms of just, not just the main characters, but the people that live in the city. We know New York, I'm looking at the crowd right now, look how yeah. diverse it is. So we paid really close attention to that in terms of really representing the diversity that is the city, you know? So that was also important. Even just what you wear, Timberlands, Air Force Ones, you know, all that stuff, you know, that represents New York. Yeah. So. No, our goal and mission was for each and every one of you to see yourselves in our show on that screen. And if you don't, let us know. <laughs> and we'll make sure it's in for the next time. Yeah. But that was our goal. So important. That's awesome to hear, um, especially as a woman of color. And Diamond, I'm curious for you, knowing that this was the crew that you're working with behind the scenes, did that feel 
comforting to you? Did it feel, <laughs> did it lend anything to creating this character, knowing that the people writing her were also women and people of color? Yeah, I mean, as women, it's hard. So for this show to be like backing women and to say, hey, like, you get the stage now is like incredible. Cause I don't think that's ever happened. Like we are really doing something here, aren't we? We're sure. really doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but. No, I really, I'm, I'm so grateful to be on the show. The audition process was, I went through three rounds, and I was like, God, please, I really want this role. Like, and I, when I got it, I was like, yeah, we really are about to change the world with this. Like, I'm honored. Oh, my God, it's incredible. That's great. And Fred and Gary... Um, as our, our men on the cast, repping uh, the men on yeah, the Yeah, but we're in touch with our feminine side. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. So>. Uh -oh. <laughs> what inspired you to join the show? You spoke so well, Gary, about the community focus. I really like what you were talking about. But what other elements of the story and the characters really drew you to this and the roles? Uh, it's, it's multifaceted. First of all, everything you've mentioned, this is such a culturally relevant, wonderful thing to be a part of in any way. I was just so honored just from the very get-go. And then I just love the idea of making of a superhero and uh, a partnership, a team that was unlikely. And uh, seeing, seeing that develop, and um, it was a challenge. I, I also, the other side of it too, was just playing this character. It's a very musical kind of thing to do because it's like you, you got the script and you're now going to sort of break it down into its components as what the sentence is, but what's the emotional content. And so uh, that was the artistic, as a voice artist, that was a really fun challenge because I love doing that kind of work. And so it was, I guess we started off with a T-Rex or a scary dinosaur, a very scary thing, but how can we soften it up without going all total Scooby, you know, which I love. But you know, it's just, so a lot of it, we, we kind of tried to find that pocket and we work together, all of us on it, each, each it's like going up, uh, it's like a music job. You go up with this little broken saxophone you know, Lunello, we got to get to the ocean. <laughs> okay, that was too English. Let's go to. <laughs> you know, and then okay, make him less broken. You know, and that, and then we'll layer it. Uh, worked with uh, Sam Regal, our, our wonderful voice director. Uh, yes, you all know him. Wonderful uh, voice director. And we just kind of we we sometimes will layer stuff together, and mess around with it. I don't know what you guys will select. You know, we just kind of do three or four or five takes. You know, of each line. And then see where it goes. So, so artistically, it was a, a wonderful thing to be a part of, too. Yeah. yeah. For me, uh, yo, 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 sure, you may as well clap for Fred. You may as well. <laughs> because, again, he has lawyers. He will sue you if you don't. <laughs> uh, for me, that, honestly, that family thing is so important to me. Like, family means yeah. everything to me. So that's, that's number one. Then reading the script, I was like, wait, this, this is amazing. I did not know the comic book at all. So this is amazing. So I secretly call a friend of mine who's huge into comic books. He's like, wait, you have a chance to do that? You need to jump on that immediately, number one. And then after that, my very first day of recording, it was the first job that I had uh, during COVID. Like, we, this is the first time that we've all kind of been together. Everything else has been me sitting in my home, in my booth, and I think your booth is probably made out of solid gold. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know how it works with him. Um, but then I did a record with her the very first job, and I had um, trained my girlfriend to be an engineer. She was my engineer at home. And she heard Diamond's voice, and she was like, who, who is that? I was like, I, I, don't, I don't know her. I don't know who that is. She was like, she's amazing. Like, her voice coming on the other side, like, I had no choice but to be good. Like, I better be good because her work in here is stunning. It is absolutely stunning. Making yeah. my heart it is now. stunning. Just wait, you guys. Just it wait. It is stunning. Yeah. It really is. Incredible song. And, and you mentioned the family element, too. That's really it, is they, they have their established family and then the family. And we have our together. trio. Yeah, so we have our trio. You know, it's, it's, it's really neat. Yeah, yeah and it was, it was really important to show a black family dynamic in the most positive light. You have multi-generational grandparents and parents and Lunella. So you get this, these different varying point of views and experiences. So just to a see that. Yeah, because you don't see that really yeah. in, a, in yeah. an animated series. 
So it was important just to show that. And I'll tell you how weirdly, too, this world came together. So the, uh, my daughter-in-law on the show is Sashir Zamada. And I literally flew here late because I just got hired to play her dad on another show. <laughs> so it's like, oh, keeps wow. being family, family, family. And I hadn't told you this, but I'm your, I'm your brother. I'm glad you know that. I was going to say, Luke, I'm your father, but I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm, not. I'm glad you know that I am now. your brother, yeah. Because we were going to talk. I, okay, I'm glad you know. This There's is good. Another thing that really draws me to the show is that, like, growing up when I was younger, I didn't have a black cartoon to kind of watch. And to see a 13-year-old who's, like, mega smart and not, like, ashamed about it is, like, incredible. And you get to watch her go through a lot of things that black girls go through. Like, there's an episode where she wants to, like, straighten her hair. And, like, it goes awry. And, like, that happened to me, you know? And, uh, but, yeah. It's with you. That's true. Okay. That, that helps, too. <laughs> but I got to say that, that Raphael's absolutely amazing. He, you know, we send him the scripts. He, he's doing all the songs. He's doing all the score. So we send him the scripts. He reads the scripts. And then he'll, you know, call me back and say, all right, what's the emotion here? What am I keying in on? He really wants to get kind of, like, really between the lines and really figure out the emotional core of each song. I mean, people throw around the word genius maybe freely, but I got to say, Raphael Sadiq is an absolute genius. 100%. But you know what? Here's the thing. I, you know, I'm, I'm saying all these things about him, but maybe it's just better for, for him to mention it. So can I introduce Raphael Sadiq? Do you want to meet yeah. Raphael Sadiq? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Raphael Sadiq! Hello. Nice. Welcome. I can't wait to come to your next signing to get you to sign on to some stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was a, uh, it was, a, it was different. I, I didn't, I didn't know if he was it's L.A. You meet a lot of people that, not who they say they are. So, we took it, we took his card, and then we looked at each other like, "Is this guy real?" Like, He's real. I'm here. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Ray, right, seriously, tell us how every week we talk to you and launch you in a new song or a new direction. And every week you give us something that is just next level beyond the, the previous one. And we're constantly like, how, how does he do this in a week? Like, it takes us so long to animate something. Well, you know, um, every day is, a, you know, for me is a challenge. You know, it's a challenge to, to work on a show like this. Um, so honestly, I don't know how to do it. I just don't ask myself any questions. You guys call and, and I look at it and I just do it. You know, that's how my career has been. I never really know. Um, when people say, you know, the sky's a genius, you no, know, I heard one of my uh, person who I, I like a lot, Prince, who he, people oh, yeah, people that. called him a genius, but he said, no, I'm not a genius, I just practice a lot. <laughs> and so that's what I do, I just practice a lot. You know, when you get the phone call, you just have to be a person that uh, shows up and, and is ready for the challenge. And, and these, this crew gives me a huge challenge, you know, like the show is great, like you said, Diamond's amazing, all the cast is amazing. You look at all the animation and... You know, you can't drop the ball. You can't be the guy that, I can't be the guy that drop, drops the ball on the team, so. So you're I mean, saying that you got to stay ready so you don't have to get ready. That's right. You got to, ah, okay. you got to be ready, yeah. But, but you guys, seriously, the music is so sophisticated on this show. Uh, what you bring to it just adds a whole extra layer of character that levels up beyond anything I've ever seen in animation. So it makes us so proud of it. Yeah, we're leveling up here on, on the Moon Girl. Yeah, thank you, Willis. Uh, like, it's just a great show. Um, it's, I, I love New York. And when he told me, you know, it's about New York, you know, I get to write to all the, you know, the animation, the graffiti. I've been coming to New York since I was in, probably in high school, you know, walking, you know, walking through Queens and, you know, I'm, Tribe Called Quest is like family to me. So I've been in, coming here since, since I was in high school, so I know the city. I know how to make the music work, and um, I'm just glad I got the opportunity to make it work and, and just to be around these great people. And it's a great cast of people. Being in the music, the music since '86, I've been playing music in the music business, but it's different working on the show. And you know, I've been scoring for about 10 years, but this has been the, the funnest show to score. Is uh, Moon Girl. Well, that is great, and we're so glad you could join us to talk about it.
Um, the lights are on because I think we're going to start Q&A very shortly. Um, but before we do that, so if you guys want to get lined up, the mics are on either sides of these aisles here. You guys know what to do. You go to Comic-Con. You know how to, this works. Um, but before we do that, I think, Steve, you have one more fun, one more thing, the post credit scene, if you yeah, will. Yeah, yeah, I've got some interesting things to talk about. Um, so first off, I am very happy to announce for the very first time ever, we have been greenlit for a season two. I mean, it's super thrilling for us because, you know, we haven't even had a show that, that's episode that's aired yet, but everyone that's seen it on the Disney and Marvel side said, we need more of this. <laughs> keep going. Please keep going. Please make more. Um, so, yeah, so we're excited about that. And here's the thing. So Rodney and I are from New York, right? And so it was really important for us to make sure we got New York right. We got the message right, and we got the visuals right, and got the feel, the vibe, and the tone right. So... We would like to share with you the first two minutes of the first episode of Moon Girl. And so what you're going to get in this clip is a song by Raphael Sadiq, Where You Come From, which is a love letter to New York and neighborhoods and where you grow up. So I would like to present the very first two minutes of Marvel's Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Fishburne was playing like a reoccurring character and I was like, like boys and like boys in the hood got him. And he's funny on blackish too. And I was like, oh man, we got us. Oh man, I'm rambling, aren't I? <laughs> hey, yeah. it's so good to meet you. Oh no. You. We've seen a lot of your posts. Thank you so much for your support. Kayla Hebon too. She's and the other Kayla, thank you. But thank yeah, you. Thank you really like, so much for this show has like so much music like incorporated and like the diversity too. And I relate with Diamond's story. I did hate my hair at one point and like now I like it because it's all poofy and stuff. It's gorgeous. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> Steve, I think you know what question I'm gonna ask. It's a beyond a related question, correct? Yes, it is. <laughs> what is his deal, man? <laughs> okay. I gotta say, the Beyonder is one of my favorite characters in the show. Um, and this character was crafted in association with Lawrence. So Lawrence wanted to do a voice in the show and we we're trying to figure out the best thing for him to do. And when this character kind of came up, he's like, all right, I, I wanna do this character, but I wanna craft him. So we would be in the voice booth and he'd be trying a bunch of different voices and try to work with that. And then we were designing the characters and I'd be like emailing designs daily and he'd call me up and say, hey, can we do a little bit of this, a little bit of that? Um, and so, yeah, it is, it is a fully realized character and, and easily one of my favorite characters in the show. Um, he is a mischievous, godlike character. Um, that is uh, not friend nor foe to Lunella. So um, like a frenemy kind of? It's like a frenemy. He has a big arc. Um, and he sings. What? So oh prepare my. yourself. Lawrence has a good voice. Yes. So what? prepare yourself for a Broadway-style musical number written by Raphael and performed by Lawrence Fishburne. Holy sugar biscuit. That's even better, and like you saw, you probably saw on Twitter that I I draw my own little icons of one version of the Beyonder in like that vampire style. That took me all night. Procreate man. You're gonna love him. I you are gonna love yeah. this character. And like I, I know, this. and like I showed this to like my mom and my grandma, and like my grandma's like, he look. I was like. They're like, he looked like Lil Nas X, and I was like, huh? <laughs> and like I showed it to my mom. She's like, huh? 
And I was like, yeah, he is so freaking cool. <laughs> oh, he is. You'll and see. I was hoping we could get like a clip of him because I want to see like what Not I yet. Think. Not yet. <laughs> he's he's, he's too, too good to reveal too soon. Well, thank you, super Thank fan. you so much. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Kayla and Kayla. Uh, we have someone over here. Hi, uh, this is a question for the cast. Um, I was wondering when it came time to uh, record your lines, if the, um, if the final like animation style had been worked out, so you kind of knew what the, you know, like what the, how the lines would pair with the visuals, and if not, now that uh, you have the finished product, you know, to, uh, you know, to, to work with, whether you might tweak things a little bit for, for season two. We don't have anything to go off of when we first go in to do the lines. I know what I do when I get in the booth. I turn into a nine-year-old freaky little girl, and I'm just, like, screaming the whole time. I have a lot of fun recording this show, but um, the times that we do get to see the animation is when we do ADR, so we have to fit the things into the, the words into the animation. Um, but I think after I saw the first episode and I saw the banter between me and Casey, a lot of it was improv. I was like, oh, we just have to keep doing more of that because it makes it, it shows their friendship really well. Um, and honestly, it, after seeing the first um, episode, I was just like, oh, I got to get crazier. Like, I got to juice this up, as Lunella would say. How about you, Fred? Yeah, I would say I, I saw a little bit of some sketch, you know, drawings and some concept art, but really I didn't. It was like a radio play, but now I'm recording alone, like I said, and I'm crazy in the booth, too. I literally am acting out, even with the, the claws going, <laughs> you know, doing the thing, kind of trying to imagine what that would be. Uh, it was a lot wilder than I realized it was going to be. Like, the art really drove the... It, the art is a character, like I say, in the in the piece. And uh, seeing the kawaii cons, you know, the, the all these emoticons... Oh, my goodness. Do you know what kawaii is? Like, kawaii figures? The little emo emoticons it's like that a come out. Yeah, these little emojis that yeah. come out of... And now that I... I didn't know that was so prominent. I thought that was just going to be used a little bit. But now that I know that there's such a visual component... Uh, and also, even when she's explaining quantum mechanics or physics, we're seeing the diagrams and the, how it works out. And, and, you know, it's so visually stunning. So, again, I agree with you. I want to get a little crazier, a little more highs and lows with the emotions. Because now I know what we're dealing with here. You know, I, I get, it informs you of that when you see it in full. Great question, though. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, uh, pretty much the same. Saw just a sketch of him from the beginning. Had no idea that the animation was going to end up looking like that. But the second they show you a little piece of animatic or something like with some motions, like, oh, that's really it. It definitely informs. It definitely informs where you go with it. it. lets you know, like with my character, oh, he's very smooth on his feet. So it really lets you, lets you, it takes you there, yeah. Cool, thank you. Thank you, man. Great question. Yeah, great, great. Yeah, I had no idea how Grace, I mean, I knew you were good, but I didn't know he was like. <laughs> and over here. Hi there. Um, first of all, Gary, I'm a big fan since Malcolm in the Middle. Oh, thanks, um, man. I have a contract I would love for you to sign after the panel. You have, uh, a, you have a what now? I have contract. a contract. It was a oh, yeah, callback. I'll sign anything. I don't have common sense. Uh, um, so I, I, I did have a question that uh, was kind of brought up, um, but I'll switch it up a little bit. So, you know, the Beyonder, and I know I saw uh, Aftershock is going to appear in an episode at some point, and, like, these are pretty obscure characters within the big picture of the Marvel Universe. Beyonder has barely been represented outside the books. I don't think Aftershock's ever been represented outside the books in any way. Can you talk about the process of, or the decision-making behind pulling some of these like really obscure characters into this world? And then is the show episodic? Are there overarching storylines? Like, What does the show format kind of look like? Oh, absolutely. Well, first off, Marvel has been an incredible partner on this project. Um, we request to use certain characters for certain episodes. They'll sometimes send us a list of, you know, this character's kind of waiting in the wings. Can you, can you do something with this character? And we do like some of the deeper cuts. We do like those characters because it gives, like, like you just said, no one's ever done this in, in a film medium before this particular character, so we can do something new and fresh with them. So yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been a great process. And as far as episodic, there is serialization. So there's definitely an arc. There's a longer story going on. And um, yeah, it it's slowly kind of unfolds over the course of the season, for sure. 
Rodney, I'd love if you had any insight or thoughts to picking those characters and specifically why those characters. Well, you know, they usually re revolve around the storyline. And then, like Steve said, usually it's, we might get a character and say, can we use this character? And like, now, well, how about this character? And then it'd be like a really obscure character. And the thing about it is that since it's so obscure and deep cut that it gives us the latitude to really shape it and form it into our own Moon Girl style. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, my name is Brittany. Um, I'm someone who's just starting to get into the, in the animation industry. And as we've seen a lot online, if you follow news, a lot of stuff has been cut lately. It's been kind of dark times. Um, so hearing you, that you guys with such a heavily representational show um, is getting a second season, it's amazing to hear. It's so encouraging and just to see all the, especially when you mentioned the artwork about the graffiti and all of the, um, the comic book like style, it's just so cool to see that people are still trying to experiment with styles and um, trying to keep animation in this the animation industry interesting, even though things have become tough. Um, I want to know if any of you guys have any words of encouragement for anybody out there who may have been starting to feel hesitant lately about being an artist or being a writer for these, um, these shows and so we can keep making content. Yeah, well, I would say, <laughs> well, first of all, keep trying, don't give up. Um, I can tell you as someone who didn't even come from America. I didn't even have a green card to, to be sitting up here on this panel. I can tell you that if it's possible for me, it, it is for anyone. Um, another fun story is another shout out I want to give is Rafael Chaydez, our producer is here. He started as a security guard at DreamWorks Features. We were both PAs there together and now he's producing the show. And every day we just talk about how we can create more opportunities now that there's more diversity up here, um, it, just more people are passionate about bringing others up with them and not just like giving them a handout, but rather giving them a bridge and mentoring them into that level. So my recommendation is find someone that can mentor you or join an organization that will believe in you. So women in animation, especially, we just did a mixture with them, amazing, right that next in animation. There's so many different uh, organizations and they are literally made up of people that want to support and help you and pull you up. So find that tribe, find that group that will uh, raise you up and and raise up with them and create a show with them and and one day you'll be up here too. Thank you so much. And also watch our show, a show like Moon. Watch our show. Yeah. Give us ratings. Yes. Give us more ratings. They'll keep making more shows that are more experimental. That's right. You know. That's true. I will watch it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Great question. All right. Uh, hi, my name is Manny. Um, first of all, to Steve, I, I grew up w um, watching your work. Uh, first off, Kim Possible grew up with that. And I'm currently loving your other work on The Ghost of Molly McGee. Oh, thank and, you. Um, when, Ghost of Molly McGee. Yeah, <laughs> representation, uh, that show too. Um, but I've been looking forward to this show forever. I love Marvel and I love animation so much. Um, but this one is for uh, Fred and Diamond. Um, we know that um, uh, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur make a great pair, but I was wondering um, how would Moon Girl work with Hulk? Because I know Fred, you also do the Hulk as well. Yeah. Um. Well, well you're saying how, Devil before? Um. How would um, Moon Girl and the Hulk work together? Oh wow. Oh wow. That would be interesting. Well, I think Devil would be a little jealous. Oh, well, absolutely. Yeah. We one thing to know. know. Yeah. One thing to know is that Devil is very loyal to her, but also can be very protective. And can be very, very jealous. There is an episode about a, uh, a pet hamster that he uh, gets jealous of and accidentally loses. Yeah, and so uh, and uh, and that's it, it. Action ensues. So yes, uh, I believe. Uh, well, Devil and Hulk uh, did have a past, but it was um, at first contentious and then and then friendship. But I think um, I think Hulk would uh, be impressed with. Uh, Lunella, you know, and just be like, yeah. and the fact that she can communicate with Devil Dinosaur. Yeah. Will you tell me what he just said? <laughs> I know he's talking about me. <laughs> he's like, 
He's looking for the nearest hot dog stand. Oh, all right. Well, let's find it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that, but I think that's how it would go down. All right. Thank you, guys. I'm looking forward to the show. Thank you. Good question. All right. Hi, guys. Um, hey. So, funny enough, my name is also Diamond. Oh, hey, girl. Oh, hey. Diamond. Hey. What's up, pressure? Um, I just want to say thank you for making this show. Like, it's so important and so impactful. Um, I'm actually born and raised in the Lower East Side, so when I saw Amazing. Delancey, I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> um, I was curious, like, how was that process sort of like researching the Lower East Side and like animating that, like with your voice acting or like making music? Like, how do you really capture the Lower East Side as its own character? Like, I'm just so excited for that. I spent a lot of time in New York when I was around Lunella's age and just like walking around and my favorite thing about New York is like people look you in the eyes and you know like yeah. if they don't they just don't they they don't care and I love that the grittiness of just like hey man I know you're a human but like I have shit ooh I <laughs> Boop, fix it and poop. I have you have to ships, do today. To, ships to get on to go to another job. It's the New York She got another job. Yeah, to go to, yeah, the ship. I've been here for too long. I'm already gritty. Um, no, but it's that. And so that's what I add to Lanella. She's very like, I have to juice this up right now. Like, I don't care what's going on. The LES needs help right now. Okay, devil. Like, she's very much like, let's get to it. Yeah. Let's get it done. Yeah. Uh, that's a fun question. I actually am curious, is anyone on the panel from New York? Only born, born, born in New York, but yes. Yeah. So why the Lower East Side? Um, well, the Lower East Side was in the comic. Yes. Um, but also, you know, I, I, I have to admit I was a West Village kid for the most part, but, you know, it's still Lower East Side. I was very familiar with, so that was all my stomping grounds. But yeah, I just love New York. It's just, it, the thing is, for both Rodney and I, you know, it, it was the artist environment. I mean, because we were here in the mid, late 90s, right? Yeah, I come here to go to Lower East Side in the village, and when I was in Brooklyn, I would come here because it was just like a whole different vibe, very artistic feel to it. I get my paints from here, too. Yeah, pearl, 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 pearl paints. Paint. Pearl paints, yeah. <laughs> cool. All right, thank you, thank Diamond. You Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. How are we doing, guys? Great. That's How are you doing? Question. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, my name is Adonis. Uh, I actually wanted to ask Raphael. I'm a huge fan, man. And hearing your music in the show and, like, hearing, just really hearing how important music is to the series and to the character, uh, it's really uplifting for me because I think that music, especially when you're talking about African-American culture, so important, like hip-hop, soul, R&B, it's all ingrained. What were some, I know you mentioned Prince before for you personally, but what were, what were some like influences that you kept in mind while creating or crafting and composing the, uh, the score for the show? Um, well, for the most part, they, I would get like, you know, we call temp music before, you know, um, I would actually work on the music and they would send me like really great temp, they send me really great temp music, like hit songs, hard songs, like songs if I reproduce them almost like, Maybe I should keep it for myself, you know? So um, they, they challenge me every week. So when I think about it, I probably think about people like, um, more up-tempo people like Nile Rogers from The Sheik, who, you know, when I was a kid, I used to go to his concerts at the Oakland Coliseum. Um, for tempo, I would think about that. A lot of jazz, a lot of like Thelonious Monk for, you know, we have some jazz pieces, we have some orchestral pieces, we have some, um, I mean, we we're all over the map, you know. Lord, 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 you so I'm, I'm I'm like Tito Puente. I'm thinking about you know all type of Latin music, Cuban music. Um, and you sing. Oh yeah, some of these I songs. sing. I, I think I, we did a it's Bill Withers. Sweet. You know, Bill Withers. Yeah, yeah. A song. Okay. We, I guess I can say that, right? It's okay. It's all good. Yeah. So, I to say what song? Yeah, a song. You know. Uh, so. You know, for me, it's about also, I grew up watching a lot of cartoons and and um, I think I learned about melody and, and music just by trial and error. You know, your parents, they work, they work, they, you go to school, you come home, a key latch kid, you know, and you plug up the cartoons on and just so these cartoons would have like these huge orchestras on them. All these, you know, these TV shows like Taxi and the Jeffersons and Good Times. 
had all these great melodies in them when people were singing like, you know, the great late Donny Hathaway. Um, so I think I wanted to be able to give, you know, kids music that they could like actually listen and hear melody and instruments, guitars, real drums, uh, real guitars, real basses, uh, tubas, violins. Uh, also, um, I work in a box like I work in Ableton. You know, it's a lot of different plugins. So I'm sort of mixing and matching a lot of different music and I'm really excited about it because I really want to give some kid that's eight or nine, ten years old to hear music and say, you know what, I don't know what I'm hearing, but by the time they turn 13, they go, this is the sound I was hearing. That's what I was doing as a kid. You know, I was listening to Motown, and then all of a sudden, you know, I become, you know, 40 years old. I'm like, you know what, I'm going to make a Motown record. And so I... I wanted to, this, this, this show gives me the opportunity to give something back to the community of the youth, you know, so, you know, 20 years later, some kid is doing, putting out music so you can listen to real music. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. All right, I think we have time for just one more question, so <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> right, yeah. you're right. Um, my name is Teresa, and I'm from New Jersey. And no, no, no disrespect to Jersey. <laughs> right? You'll, you'll, you'll know what that means when you watch the episode. Right, oh, exactly, yeah. exactly. Which I saw the, tw the turnpike sign for New Jersey, so yay. Um, <laughs> um, actually, I have three questions. One, um, has any of you ever read comic books when you were kids? Two, um, oh God. does Devil Dinosaur likes all kinds of music? Like, you know, pop, rock, heavy metal, the whole nine yards. And three, oh, God, three. What, what, what was three? <laughs> now I forgot three. Okay, so I got two questions. We then. only have time for one more anyway. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, Very yeah. New Jersey of you. Very New Jersey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank All right. You. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I think we can answer the devil dinosaur one real fast. Yes. The answer yes. is yes. Yes, correct. And then, yeah, <laughs> yes, Devil, actually, yes. Devil has his own uh, mixtape. There's yes. a couple of episodes where he's own got style his, of music. and his, his his musical style is a little bit different. Surprises mm -hmm. Lunella just a little bit, <laughs> but uh, it's a lot of fun. You'll see. Very cool. And then, did any of you All read of oh. comic books? Oh yeah. Definitely. Oh yes. Still. Oh yeah. Still. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was more of a cartoon freak on television. Like, there's not a cartoon that I did not watch. My cousin Greg. Gave me all his comics. I didn't understand them. I was too impatient to read. But there's not a car. Even now, before I go to bed, every single night, I put on cartoons. Every night. Yeah. I just, and I just remembered the third question. Do any of you have any pets? Any yes. pets? Oh, like yeah. Dog, yeah. cats. No, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I have a little Maltese poodle. Oh. oh. Pepsi. Hey. Pepsi. <laughs> two, two beautiful, cute Scotties and a leopard gecko. Yeah. My 16-year-old dog has has left me now, but I do have a lot of mosquitoes. <laughs> Take care of those, though. <laughs> you yeah, feed them, don't you? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Two dogs for me, Cassie and Bowie. That's got a nine-year-old son. <laughs> uh, I used to have a cocktail, but he passed away. So now I have, Aww. but I do have two little girls who love the show and are obsessed with the songs, by the way. So right. already. I had a, a lot of pets, but they're all gone now. Four, Aww. Mia, Rufus, a ton of them. It's like family. Aww. I have a cat. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your question. Thank you. And thank you all for being here. It's thank a lot of so one of Thank you so much. There's a little surprise for you guys. Um, there is a, a reprint of... Devil Dino Marvel's Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, issue number one, we're going to give you, and here's the thing, on the back cover is a QR code for a download of the main title song. Oh. Is it ready now? Can they download it It is now? ready now, yep. So oh, wow. Enjoy the music, right. and please enjoy the show. February 10th on Disney Channel, and shortly thereafter on Disney+. Plus. Thank, Thank you, guys. You so Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>